Urban Jungles Radio, Urban Jungles Radio. Urban Jungles Radio, Urban Jungles Radio. Once again, growing up Hispanic, I believe I've eaten the worst stuff, like cow's tongue and bull balls and all that stuff they made us eat. It was horrendous. That's why I'm a vegetarian today. It's, it's completely because of my parents. <laughs> I understand. Making me eat testicles and stuff like that. But Let's anyway, Marty, get, like, we're, we're running out of time, on. and I, I really want to get your take on this because it's, it's, I think it's such an important perspective. What do you think about today's programming? It is so significantly different from, I want to say, almost the art that you created we're seeing today on, on things like Animal Planet, we're seeing a, a new breed of filming, animal filming. A lot of it seems to be really kind of based in, um, you know, scaring the living shit out of somebody as opposed to having more an appreciation of nature. Are you seeing this yourself or are you just appreciating it? Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me put in a pitch first and then I'll answer your question. <laughs> what I want to put in a pitch for animal lovers be sure, you can either go on the Wild America website, wildamerica.com, into the village, mm-hmm. and you go into the Wild Chapel, which is that church up on the hill, and then you, you look at the poem. Uh, you can listen to or read it. It's called Animals and People, or else I'm pretty sure you can go on to www.wildpoem.com. Uh, wild poem, wild okay. and, and that really that really is touching for me. Um, a lady, uh, actually a lady who lives here in Colorado, uh, wrote it. Her name's Patty Ann Rogers. She lives down on the Front Range. Um, but, uh, but she, and actually there's a recording of her reading her poem and of me reading her poem, and that's very powerful. Um, so that's the, that's the good news about, let's call it a touching relationship. It's called Animals and People, the Human Heart in Conflict with Itself. Um, to answer your question in general about television, uh, like I said, four channels to 400, film to video, quality to crap. Um, bless their hearts. Their budgets are a minuscule fraction of what our budgets were. Therefore, they can't be, um, uh, let's say, animal-centric. They have to be people-centric because, you know, the, the guys like, uh, you know, Steve Irwin, bless his heart, he pushed the envelope a little too hard. Um they can't, they, he never showed snakes laying eggs like we do. He never showed snakes capturing their prey like we do. Um, he, never showed, he never showed the dramatic moments in nature. That t- it, t- it took one guy, George Dodge and his wife Kathy, it took them three months, three months, sitting in front of an aquarium to film the snail's mating sequence in, in uh, Multitude of Mollusks. Multitude of mollusks, snails mating. They're hermaphroditic. They both have an innie and an outie, and they use love darts, calcareous, which is calcium, calcareous love darts that they stab each other with to, like, you know, come on, wake up, let's go. Nice. Um, The point of the matter is we had, and it's easy for me to be critical and judgmental, we had the luxury of, of of a substantial budget, due to the commitment that PBS made to Wild America, and that was directly due to people like yourself, viewers, watching it, pumping up the numbers, pumping up the the viewers, pumping up the Nielsen ratings, which don't get me started on Nielsen. (laughs) Um, If your ratings are bad, it sucks. How can a 1,000 people ever know what's really going on in America? But if they're good, you go, yeah, rock on, rock on, Nielsen, I love it. Um, and you pretty much go back and forth. And, and there's got to be a better way. Mr. Nielsen, sorry, there's got to be a better way. Um, here's what I will say critically about a, a wildlife films in America. But first, let me say something about television programs in America. And you probably should edit this out. Nope. Because it's rude and I might get sued. That, go for um, it. It's my observation. And, and I, it's true and real for me. When I look at the Kardashians, I believe that they're saying, hey, girls, watch this program. Their butt's bigger than yours. You know, and and when I see Honey Boo Boo, I'm sorry. You know, bless this little girl's heart. When I see that, I go, hey, everybody with children, watch this. Uh, Your kid ain't this dumb. Right. You know, I see Duck Dynasty. Bless their hearts. Those boys are doing good. They've done a good thing. But I think people watch that and they go, hey, I may be a redneck, but at least my beard ain't that long. I ain't that crazy. I don't have that many problems. 
I, it's, it's like television is aiming for the lowest common denominator, and it's certainly aiming for the most dramatic, call it negative, aspects. It's like you just said, animals, they're all going to kill you. Ugh, animals are so stupid. Look at the funny stuff. Now, how can I criticize that? We did dangerous encounters. We did wacky babies. Dangerous encounters. We sold, you know, a, a whole bunch of videos. You know, and animals attacking people and doing dangerous things. Wacky babies. Animals doing serious things. Those were really the exceptions. Those were the specials that we did. The Wild America series is really much more, let's call it informative, educational, neutral than some of those specials that we did that were more dramatic, more ha-ha, more oh my. Um, what really is going on is there are limited budgets, and that means that you need to build comedy and drama with a human element because you can script that, you can direct that, you can control that, you can produce that in an hour and a half or a day and a half for X amount of dollars, whereas if you want to try to create drama and comedy with wildlife, you're not going to bang that out in a day and a half. You're not going to bang, you know, talk shows, game shows. They shoot three episodes a day. Yeah. They shoot three episodes a day. You know, well, we never shot three episodes a month. You know, we, we, we never shot three episodes. You know, we never shot an episode in a month ever, even if it was an easy episode. Like, um, oh, you go to McNeil River in Alaska, and there's 50 bears fishing, and your camera is rolling, 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 rolling for a week or so. And at the end of that time, you know, you got 40 hours of film. My gosh, if you can't put together a film of all that, bears and action and salmon and this and that and whatever. But, but that's a rare exception. There, you know, there were, there were very, very few programs that we shot inside of a month. Most of them we planned and we had two, two, two years, two spring times for the turkey gobbling or, or two autumns for the bighorn budding heads or, you know, two summers for the baby birds to hatch or two winters for the lynx to be hunting in the snow. Um, and that was really our our um, schedule was that we shot, we tried to have two years, you know, so that we could have, you know, eight seasons, four and four, to shoot any particular program. So let me tell you, let me tell you my um, criticism, observation, however you want to characterize this, of, um, of television in America. We're not committed. We are not committed to quality programming. In the country of England, uh, Great Britain, and I'm jealous of this, they have a tax on television sets. And the, the television there is controlled by the government, which I happen to believe is a good thing. You don't believe that? All I can say is four things, ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. Amen. Um, and, uh, and PBS being the rare exception. The like BBC, to that, I mean. Critical comment. Um, but what happened with PBS and what happens these days and, and bless all of them, is, uh, you know, whatever. All of the, all of the great uh, programming, uh, largely on PBS, public television, it's most of it. In England, they charge a tax on television sets, and they take that money and they fund the BBC. And they do great British comedy, they do great British drama, and they do great British wildlife programming. And much of that British wildlife programming is done, quote, in co-pro, co-production, with someone in this country, whether it's a Discovery or a Nat Geo or whatever. But basically, the, the let's say, the heavy lifting is done by the British people who pay a tax on their television sets to produce, I'm jealous to say, the best dang wildlife programming there is yep. is done by the BBC NHU, which is their natural history unit in Bristol, England. I know all those guys, been there, worked with them, licensed some stock footage, et cetera, et cetera. Um, been at Bath, England at a conference, and like I said, they threw you know, tomatoes and shoes at us on stage. <laughs> but I don't hold that against them because it was a rude film. Hogwild was a rude film. And so what I'm saying is, 
that really until there are audiences of 26 million watching a wildlife program in America, seconds. or until there's a tax on television sets and the government chooses to spend that money on comedy, drama, and wildlife documentaries and worthwhile programming, which don't get me started on our current Congress <laughs> and their, let's just say, you know, uh, attention uh, that they give to, you know, issues. Um, we will continue to have television that's produced and aimed at the lowest common denominator. 60 seconds. Uh, and why those people are watching those programs rather than, let's call it, smart people watching good stuff. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. I I'm afraid that a lot of the smart people have given up on the good stuff, and they're off doing something else. They're reading a book. Amen. So, on that happy note, <laughs> or they're listening to your radio program. That's true. Here yeah, we yeah. are. They're listening here at Urban Jungles Radio. I, so uh, along those lines, Marty, will we ever get that back? Will, will we ever have an intelligent show again? Will we ever have Wild America back? Well, you know, uh, what I can say is, uh, you know, I'm Marty Stauffer, and you're listening to Urban Jungles Radio. Ten seconds. And I hope you continue to listen to Urban Jungles Radio because you just asked the question. You just asked the question. And that is the question. And that's the question that the people in the audience need to ask themselves. And they need to answer for themselves. And they need to turn off the TV when the crap comes on. And they need to turn on the TV when the good stuff comes on. Thank <laughs> you.